Hello, Singaporean friends. Hello, hello. Yeah, so basically, Ferio, we have muted everyone to reduce the yeah, background noise. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, okay. So, let's wait. Yeah, let's wait another 10 seconds. Yeah. yeah. I will show the, a bit of the, of the area before we stop the, the PPT. Oh, you're going to show, so we will zoom in to you. Yep, please. Okay. Yeah, let me just uh, make a very quick introduction. Hello, everyone, <laughs> for, for coming in um, uh, on time. Uh, this is Amy here, the brand ambassador of Crystal Wines. And uh, today, of course, you are having an, another exciting virtual tasting masterclass, uh, Chateau Troplon Mondo, uh, premier Grand Cru Classé. And it will be hosted by our sales director, I mean, the Troplon Mondo sales director, Ferio Dufo. A uh, very quick SOP, we have muted all participants to reduce background noise. If type in the group chat, if you would like to ask the questions verbally, it's fine. Let us know. Um, we will uh, unmute you and let you ask the, your questions verbally. So I now hand over the rest of the presentation to Ferio. Um, yeah, I think Ferio is going to show a quick um, overview of his background. Interesting okay. at the Chateau now. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah. So, welcome to Trollo Mondo. Welcome uh, to you uh, virtually, but uh, glad to, to have you here at Trollo Mondo. We are at the moment uh, in the chateau, uh, Trollo Mondo. And uh, I will show you just quickly because this is the, the most important this is the, the vineyard. So, you can see here from the chateau part of the vineyard, and you can see uh, the village of Saint Emilion uh, far from here uh, on the other hill. So we are here on the top of the, of the saint Emilion hill, for your information. I just wanted to, to share with you this beautiful view we have this morning, because this is uh, 9 o'clock in the morning today, at the moment in France. Okay. Yeah, actually, Farrell, I'm just thinking whether we can spotlight to you now, because we are still, I, on my side, I'm having the PowerPoint. Um, okay. The screen. So How let me do? just talk to yeah. Let me just talk to Cheryl and see if she can spotlight to you. Let me talk to her privately. Spotlighted. I think it's spotlighted. Yeah, that's I. Oh, I hope all the other participants can see you clearly. Things should be fine. Okay. I think you can go ahead, Farrell. Okay. <clears throat> so we are. Um, uh, right now, in near the, the the restaurant table, so this is the, the chef's table here, uh, inside the chateau. And right there, you see the kitchen of the chef, where we'll cook the, the ville tartare later. And hey. here's the chef, David Charrier, our Michelin star chef, who will cook for us uh, today the, the ville tartare. But uh, because you are in Singapore and me near him, I will be the, the one who will eat the chef's tartare. I'm very lucky. <laughs> Ship it to me. <laughs> I'll wait for you. Okay. So, back here. So, uh, again, welcome everybody. Uh, maybe we can share the, the presentation, maybe? Okay. Let's give Cheryl some time. <laughs> everybody knows Trollomondo already? Uh, all our guests already tried our wines before, or it's, uh, this is something new for you? Everything is okay? Yep. Okay, not new for me, say Denis. Okay, so you will see today, this is the best wine of the world, of course. <laughs> um, so you see on the pictures here the, the, with the horses, you can see a big house there uh, on the picture. This is a chateau. This is where I am at the moment uh, when I'm talking to you. And this place is the, the highest point uh, of the region. It's 113 meters of altitude. This is very high for Bordeaux. Uh, if you compare with Bordeaux city, 
Bordeaux City is at zero meters of altitude and uh, Trollomondo is, is at 113 meters of altitude. It means a lot because you, the, the soils are not the, the same when you are on the top of a hill uh, than when you are on, down the hill. You can go to the next picture. You have a big view of our uh, vineyard. Imagine that the chateau is in the middle of the park, in the middle of the green part of the map, uh, in the middle of our vineyard. Trollomondo vineyard is, uh, is around 38 hectares, which is quite big if you compare with uh, the other saint million estates. Uh, if you compare with Chateau Fijac, Chateau Canon, and Trollomondo, we have the same size, around 40 hectares. Uh, but if you compare with the, the average size of Saint-Emilion, Saint-Emilion is around 10 hectares average per chateau. Uh, so Trollomondo, we are quite huge, but the big chance we have is that we have a one-piece vineyard. All our vineyard is surrounding the chateau, and it means that we are on the top of the hill and we are the sole agent of our terroir. So we produce wine from the top of the hill to the, to the slopes, Imagine that on the top of the hill, you have a lot of clay, uh, very deep, deep clay soil, uh, 16 meters deep of blue clay. Uh, on the blue clay, we planted Cabernet Sauvignon. And then on the slopes, you have a lot of uh, limestones. Limestone soil, we bring all the freshness, all the purity to the wine, and we planted Merlot and Cabernet Franc on those slopes. <coughs> Sorry. So our two major uh, soils are clay on the top of the hill, will bring the power to the wine, and limestones on the slopes, uh, on the coteau, uh, to bring the freshness, the purity, the minerality to the wine. We can go to the next slide. <clears throat> this is the view I was showing you at the beginning from the chateau. You see part of our vineyard. This is the western uh, part of the vineyard. Um, on the west, we have the village of Saint-Emilion. It's a small village. It's 2,000 people living there, inhabitants there in Saint-Emilion. And in front of you now, you have Merlot, uh, Merlot uh, vineyard. This is mid clay, mid limestone soil. <clears throat> and um, imagine that we have the same uh, vineyard on the eastern part and on the south and on the north. So, um, and it's quite unique to have this one, uh, one piece vineyard here in Saint-Emilion and we dominate the full top of the hill. If you go straight on the west, our neighbors are Chateau Pavimaca, I'm sure you already know. Uh, on the south part, we have uh, Chateau Pavi. On the north, we have Chateau Trotteville and on the east, we have uh, La Mondotte. So we are on the middle of beautiful chateaux uh, because all the best chateaux are always on the hill in Saint-Emilion, always. If you see the little um, draw on the top of the screen, you can see how Trollomondo is higher compared than the village. That's why the soil are very different. We are the only one who have this clay in Saint-Emilion. The regular Saint-Emilion top Estates got only limestones. We have the chance to have those deep, deep blue clay. And uh, on those deep blue clay, we have a lot of, uh, of flint, silex, and uh, strong, very uh, uh, tough white stones. And those very specific soil will help us to, to make a very unique wine. We don't want to make the same wine as our neighbors. We want to make a Trollomondo wine, which is Trollomondo and only Trollomondo. We want to make wine which are the reflect of our terroir only. We can go to the next slide. This is the this picture is very interesting because this is the the the, the truth. We have a lot of carriers uh, in uh, our underground. Uh, you have to know that Saint Emilion was very famous, of course, for wine, but um, all the stones which build the Bordeaux or the cities of the region are coming from the Saint-Emilion quarries. Uh, 
So, and it, it shows you that, yes, our soil are full of limestones as well. So under the clay, uh, if you dig 16 meters on the top, you touch the rock like this. Uh, this is the soft uh, uh, limestones. And if you are on the slopes, you just have to dig for 50 centimeters and then you will touch rock like this. This is very interesting to have this because those stones, limestones, and then also the clay, uh, are like sponge for water. You know, in Saint-Emilion, it's raining more than in London. This is quite crazy. Yeah? Every winter, it's raining a lot. And um, our soil have the role to be like a sponge. Because during the summer, more and more, because of the climate change, it's more and more hot. And uh, it's warmer and warmer. And uh, the chance we have is those soil, those terroirs will uh, pump all the water and give it to the, the vineyard. And this is why we have the chance to make every year uh, a beautiful uh, harvest. We just finished the harvest a few weeks ago. Uh, and uh, we have water all year long in the soil. We can go to the next. Everything is okay? I'm not too quick. If you have question anyway, you can, uh, you can ask me anything, everything at, at the end. <coughs> we were talking about the limestone and uh, now I show you the, 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 the clay, the unique clay we have with those big flints you see on the screen, uh, this big piece of flint. This will bring some like a uh, gunpowder taste some um, very uh, mineral, mineral tastes uh, in, into the wine. And the magic for us at Trollomondo is to produce wine, which are, of course, quite powerful, but full of freshness and full of mineral tea to, to make them very drinkable, very elegant. So this is the two major soil, and this is the most important point to understand today, to understand better our wines and why Trollomondo wines are like this. In the end, when you will taste the wine, you will see that we can feel uh, the limestone and we feel as well the clay into the taste of our Trollomondo wines. We can go to the, to the next peak. <coughs> you know, in saint Emilion, in Bordeaux, we use a uh, few uh, different grapes. We are uh, blenders, we blend wine. <clears throat> if you if you compare with Burgundy, I'm from Burgundy, so uh, and I'm working in Bordeaux. It's a, it's a shame, maybe I don't know, but I, I still got my passport to go back in Burgundy sometimes. But I'm very happy to be in, in Saint Emilion because Saint Emilion is the most Burgundy-ish part of, of Bordeaux. Uh, I love this place. Uh, so if you compare with Burgundy, it's only one variety. It's Pinot Noir, only. In Bordeaux. The difference is uh, we do a blend, so we have different varieties, different varietals. So in Trollomondo, we use mainly Merlot. It's 85% of our blend, 85% of our vineyard. Then we use Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc. Today it's a kind of 15-15 Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon in terms of plantation. In terms of blend today, it's 85 Merlot, 13 Cabernet Sauvignon, and 2% Cabernet Franc. We are replanting a lot our uh, vineyard because of the climate change. We have to find a solution to fight uh, the sun, to fight the warm weather we have every year. So the solution for us is to replant more Cabernet Franc because Cabernet Franc is the varietal which is a bit more, uh, start to be mature, to be ripe, uh, later than the, the Merlot and the Cabernet Sauvignon and this varietal will bring some, a lot of freshness into the wine and low alcohol uh, into the wine. So we will increase slowly the Cabernet Franc part into the wine. The Merlot will bring all the, the fruitiness, the, the pleasure, the, the, the power to, the, <coughs> to the, the wine, to the final wine. And the Cabernet Sauvignon will bring a lot of structure to the wine. The, the, the chance with the blend is that every year we can show the truth of a vintage uh, and doing the best wine every year and we blend the pleasure of the Merlot, we blend the, the, the backbone of the, of the Cabernet Sauvignon and we bring a bit of freshness thanks to the Cabernet Franc. 
So, Ferio, do you see? Do you see in the group chat? Um, do you manage to see that there's a question about Mello? Yeah, I don't yeah. see the question now. Yeah. Can so, you the question? so given your terror, how do you choose to plant mainly Mello, which is okay. pretty much what you just explained? First of all, Saint Emilion or the right bank of Bordeaux, so Pomerol, Saint Emilion. This is the, the kingdom of Merlot. This is the kingdom of Merlot. So this is historical. There is Merlot everywhere here in this, uh, in this area. Fort Rolomondo Estates, because we, we, look about our, uh, we, we look about our soils, uh, because of the limestones, because we wanted to always produce very fresh Merlot, we planted Merlot and limestones mainly, mainly limestones to bring we want the Merlot pump the freshness of the of the limestone. We planted the Cabernet Sauvignon on the clay soil uh, to make the Cabernet Sauvignon very structured, very, very, uh, I would say, like a big backbone for the wine. And then we planted the Cabernet Franc on the on the limestone as well to uh, make the Cabernet Franc very pure, very low alcohol, very fresh. This is why we choose. This is how we choose. Uh, the varietal for the soil. Yeah, so there's another question which pretty much links to what you what, what you also mentioned about climate change and also you know uh, increasing more cabernet franc. So Dennis is yeah. asking about how um, Chopla Mondot is adapting to climate change um, because it seems to be a game changer, of course, to yeah. many winemakers of the world. The, it's getting warmer and all that. So how will you expect your wine to change? Our full body, very... Yeah, um, yeah. You, you know, for now almost uh, 20 years, we see the difference in terms of weather. The weather is hot and hot, uh, hotter and hotter. Uh, the way we choose to fight the climate change, um, is to plant more Cabernet Franc. We don't want to plant any Spanish or uh, Southern uh, varietal to, uh, to, to, to fight uh, the climate change because in Bordeaux, we cannot use those varietals and we want to make true Bordeaux, true saint Emilion wines. Uh, so we decided to plant more Cabernet Franc on the limestone. Cabernet Franc, as I said, is a cépage, is a varietal that is less alcoholic than the Merlot and the Cabernet Sauvignon. And this varietal will bring a lot of freshness into the wine and a lot of um, purity to the wine. Because if we use only Merlot, because of the climate change, more and more, we will uh, have powerful wines. And we don't want to have powerful wines. We want to have very pure and very fresh wines. The second way to fight is to work much more into the vineyard. First of all, we are, we are farmers. We are grapes growers, uh, and to make the best wine possible, you have to make the best grapes possible. So the, the, we have the chance to have beautiful and very good uh, technicians here at Rolomondo. So we found a new way to, uh, to uh, manage the vineyard. So we will, uh, I would say, uh, let less leaves into the, the root, the, the vineyard, we will cut lower the vineyard to have less leaves. When you have less leaves, you have less uh, photosynthesis. It means less chlorophyllization. It means less sugar. So it means less alcohol as well. So it's one of the parts. Then the second part will be to produce more. Uh, we don't do any more uh, huge green harvest like before. We are not looking for maturity because we have a very strong weather. We are looking for uh, freshness to for uh, into our wines now, so we go to the maximum we can produce legally. Legally, uh, I will compare to give you an example. I will compare the Merlot and the Chardonnay. Chardonnay is the white varietal used in Ch in Champagne and in Burgundy. If you do very small uh, production, small yields, you will have very fat, very buttery, very uh, powerful white wines, which is not very good. That's why in Burgundy, they will produce large quantities of Chardonnay to make sure that the Chardonnay will stay very pure. Merlot is the same. If you do a huge green harvest, if you keep only very few grapes per, uh, per root, uh, you will have a very strong Merlot. So we decided to produce more Merlot to 
have a better dilution of the power. Am I clear? Is okay? Yep, yep, get it. So what do you also think about the other Bordeaux varieties? How is it going to pan out? Like the Petit Verdot, Malbec, Malbec Cabernet okay. coming back? So yes. Also a late, late ripening, great variety. Totally true, very true. Now, Petit Verdot is mainly used for the, the, the left bank, not uh, in the right bank. Here we use more Malbec. Malbec is a Southern and Bordeaux varietal, uh, late ripening, as you say. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an option to use more Malbec as well in the future. Uh, this is not the solution we want to use at Trollo Mondo because uh, Malbec is not made for our kind of soil. Uh, we will not have um, maybe not enough, good enough Malbec with limestones or clay. Definitely we use Merlot, Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon because to us, to me, this is the best varietal we can use. Uh, this is our choice. This is our taste as well. Uh, I, will, I, will say, I will give you a joke. I mean, uh, you know, we produce the wine we like because if we don't sell it, we can drink it in the end. Yeah. I've also read an article before um, about new Bordeaux varieties coming up, like Toriga National and all that, yeah. Marcelin. So what do you think how, for a right bank? Does it work? No. Not more I for mean, left bank. I mean, uh, this is not typical uh, Bordeaux blend, Bordeaux uh, varietal. This is Spanish varietal, or this is Southern varietal. We are in Bordeaux, uh, and we have to keep Bordeaux traditions. We have to keep true Bordeaux varietals. Uh, and uh, this is not the, the long-term solutions to change our varietals to make wine. The, the, for me, the long-term solution is to work more in the vineyard, first of all. Okay. We can go for the next. Yep. So, Trollo Mondo, we so you see a bit of our vineyard and our uh, colleagues. We have 12 horses uh, for, the, for the plugging of the, of the, of the soil. Uh, we do 80% of the vineyard, 85% of the vineyard with the, the horses um, for more than 10 years now. We, want, we don't have any label of uh, organic or biodynamic. We, we, we trust it. Huh? I mean, uh, it can work, but not in, not in Trollo Mondo. I mean, uh, the, the rules of uh, an organic wine uh, are too uh, restrictive for us and uh, it will not work. I told you. It's, it's raining more here than in Burgundy, more here than in, uh, in uh, London. So it's very humid. So um, if, if, if we have to work organic, I mean, with the rules of the organic uh, agriculture, it will not work. So we do our own label. We don't use any more uh, chemicals. Uh, this is only biocontrol uh, treatments. So it's only organic uh, treatments uh, for more than 10 years. First of all, we want to make a very pure wine. We want to make uh, very pure without any chemicals, of course. We want to make sure that uh, our uh, soil remains free. And then we also want that our workers and horses can work in a very pure and clean environment. This is very important for us. So we, uh, we work the vineyard like this. If, and if we go to the next slide, I can talk to some, uh, to some other things. We, we want to make the biggest biodiversity possible here. So we replanted a lot of trees, a lot of bush to make birds and bats come back. Because if you look at the vineyard, it's quite low. There is no big trees for a, a, a bird to hide during the night or during the day. Uh, so we decided to replant a lot of trees, a lot of bush to make sure that the bats can use the radar to, to fly in the vineyard, to make sure that the birds can hide um, in, a, in a tree and uh, without, far from a, a dangerous animal. Uh, we planted a lot of different uh, plant uh, flowers to make birds, to make uh, bees come back as well. It's a lot of little and uh, very um, small things to make our environment very pure. The chance we have is we are 
<coughs> the sole agent of our terroir. We are alone here on the top of the hill, so we can manage our vineyard the way we want. We have no neighbors here. We are playing with our soil, with our garden, the way we want, and we can remain very clean there. We can go to the next uh, slide. We just, we are in October, we just finished the harvest uh, a few weeks ago. So 2020 will be, uh, I will say, uh, again, a, a good, a good uh, harvest, a good uh, vintage. Thanks to the climate change, we do every year very uh, mature and very uh, uh, ripe fruit. So we have no problem anymore with uh, uh, non-mature grapes. And uh, so that's why we have the chance to make every year now uh, good, good vintages. Now, uh, now, this is difficult to say it's the vintage of the century because this is every year very good vintages. So it's a big chance. It's a big chance we have. So we just finished the harvest uh, on the 30th of September. We started in the, on the 4th of September and we finished with the Cabernet Franc on the 30th of September. We can go to the next slide. You see some of our grapes. This is this vintage grapes. Those one, I guess, it was the Cabernet Sauvignon. Very small berries, little fruit like this. This is what we like. We want to have a, a mature uh, bunch, and um, uh, and we want to have very small and and crispy berries. This is the best we want. The best we we can have. We can go to the next slide. In terms of vinification, let's talk about technical things now. Um, we want now to be very pure. So we harvest quite early to keep only fresh uh, berries, uh, not too mature berries, not too ripe berries. And then at the, I said we are very, very busy now in the vineyard to make the best fruit possible. But now we start to be a bit lazy in the winery. We want to make sure that the grapes can make, can give to the, to the juice, to the wine, only what she wants to give. Uh, so there is no more uh, pumping over, there is no more pigeage. We are doing infusion and no more extraction. Extraction was good when the grapes were not uh, mature, ripe enough. Um, now we have ripe enough grapes, so no need to push. The grapes to give more. We just keep what the grapes gives us. In terms of aging, so yeah, fermenting, sorry. We, for the fermentation, we do uh, alcoholic and malolactic fermentation into steel vats, and then we barrel the wine very early with the final blend, early January, for 18 months. In French new oak, 50% of the production is in French new oak, and 50% is in Enforez or a huge 900 liters uh, oak barrel. We can go to the next slide. Blending session, I told you, <clears throat> this is very Bordelais, very, uh, uh, we, do, we don't do, uh, we don't do in Bordeaux uh, mono uh, varietal wines, we do blend. So we do the blend very early. So we do them, we do uh, uh, I think we lost Ferio. Sorry, um, I think the connection probably that side was a bit poor. We'll try to admit him back. Just give me a minute to text him. Okay, can you hear me now again? Yes. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry about that. Very no sorry. Worries. I'm back. So we, we are in the countryside, you know, it's not uh, easy every day. We are far from the city here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes, we blend very early. We blend the wine um, 
early end of December and we and we borrowed them early January for 18 months. I saw a question. What was the question? Um, are these wines extra too? Those wines are only extra too, of course. Of course. Can you see me? Hello? Yeah. Yep. Farrell, I can see you clearly. Yeah, okay, very good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, uh, yes, those, those wines are 100% 100 uh, extra too, of course. Next uh, slide. Uh, okay. So, oh, this is two pictures you can see about our bottles. Um, you have a word of my uh, big boss uh, with Henri de Gironde. This, this man was, is coming from uh, uh, Cognac area. His family is uh, a huge family in Cognac. So uh, uh, he knows what is terroir, he knows what is wine, uh, he knows what is blend. And um, uh, he, his true vision is to make today uh, a wine which is the, re the reflect of uh, our soil. So Trollomondo, imagine that Trollomondo wines are the true reflect of our soil. We can go to the next slide. Actually, uh, Farrell, we have um, a question on blending. Um, yeah. The question by Matthew is whether you can talk through uh, what you think are some of the advantages of blending versus mono varietal wines. And the, the, the huge advantage is for you is to make sure that you every year got uh, a good wine. Uh, we can do, uh, I would say, uh, less mistake. Uh, if, uh, imagine that during vintage 2021, uh, all the, the Merlot are not mature, we will still have a bit of uh, Cabernet to, uh, to make some wine. So it will be a different style, of course, but uh, we will still have uh, good varietal to make good wine. Uh, then the other point is um, it helps to keep um, every year the perfect uh, ski to make the perfect wine every vintage. Uh, so again, it's a, it's a guarantee for quality always. Uh, and also it's to give, of course, much more complexity to the wine. Uh, it's interesting because you will have the chance today to taste Mondo, which is 100% Merlot, and uh, Trollo Mondo, which is the blended wine. So you will see the difference. Um, in Bordeaux, we have a huge, huge different uh, kind of soil. You see, we have clay, we have limestones, and not everything can, can uh, grow on every soil. That's why we have different varietals, and in the end, we have to make a blend. Um, this slide to show you that, of course, wine is our core business. We are wine growers, we are grapes growers, we are farmers. But we also have a restaurant uh, inside the property, inside the winery. And we also have a few rooms, six rooms total, for anybody, for everybody who want to, to come and, uh, and stay at the chateau. We start to be uh, a bit smart, you know, when you come for a tasting, then you are very hungry, you go for a big and very good uh, meal at the restaurant, and then you are a bit drunk because you drink a lot of Trollomondo wines, you go to the hotel so we can take money at each stage. You see, we are very, very smart. <laughs> we can go to the next slide. Oh yeah, so anyway, Farrell, um, so uh, Matthew who asked about blending, so yeah. he he replied um, he agreed um, on the complexity part, but he also thinks that there's a fine line to not having it feel or taste over-engineered as a blend, I believe. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's very true. It's also a way to make sure that the taste is the same every year. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's uh, proceed and hopefully we can taste the wines in, in, in two, two minutes, two, three minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. We can go now if you want for a, a cooking session. Yes. Is it okay for you? Yeah. 
I'll let you give me the, the camera. Okay. Up. Let's go. You see the table of the restaurant. And then this is David Charrier, our, our very talented chef. And this is all the ingredients. Hello, David. Hello. Hello. Okay. Everything is clear? The video is good for you? Yes, it is. Perfect. So, today the meal is uh, veal tartare. Uh, this is a dish that you can um, uh, easily do in, uh, at home if you have the ingredients. If you don't have, if you don't have any veal, you can use beef, of course. The first, uh, the first uh, part of the, of the cooking session is to, of course, co cut your, your meal, your, your meat. So I hope everyone received the recipe and, and for those who are uh, ambitious, you could do a cook a long session with the chef. Yeah. Well, the chef uh, was here very early this morning to, to prepare a few things to make it not too long for you at the, during the video. But uh, this is something you can quickly do at home because I guess, chef, there is nothing to cook. Il a rien à cuisiner. Il a nothing to to. It's it's a cold dish. So, c'est une brunoise of uh, mm -hmm. of meat of veal. So uh, you see how lucky I am. I have a, a Michelin star chef teacher every day at work. My wife is very jealous. Ship some to me, Faro. <laughs> you are making uh, me really taste. hungry. I will taste it first and finish it first. <laughs> and then I will imagine if I can send you some. <laughs> now I'll wait next year, right? You're supposed to olive come oil. over. This is olive oil. Olive oil. Tabasco, few drops but for you. It's okay. Tabasco is not uh, not strong enough for you in Singapore. Yeah, not strong enough. We need our chili paddy. Pepper. <laughs> Pepper, salt. Very important to never forget salt and pepper. And you mix. What is the famous dish in uh, Singapore? This is a spicy crab, yes? Chili crab. Chili crab, yeah. yeah. You reserve the meat on the side. Then, next preparation. This is cream? Cheese fresh. Uh, fresh. Fresh cheese. Okay. Fromage blanc. This is a fresh cheese. With? Kind of yogurt. Uh, yeah, like a burrata. No, not, not like a burrata, it's, not salty. it's like it's like a yogurt, like a yogurt, creamy yogurt. So you have a bit of salt, a bit of uh, chili pepper. Espelette, from Espelette. From Espelette, Espelette is a, is a French area where we grow uh, pepper, but it's a very, it's not a strong pepper, it's a very delicate pepper. Yes, and horseradish. Horseradish, you know what is horseradish? Uh, yeah, I've heard of it. I don't cook. Yeah, but I know of horseradish. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, the horseradish sauce, right? Yeah, true. It's fresh. But this one is fresh. The same of wasabi. It's a cuisine of wasabi, say chef. Then you reserve. Here you have a brunoise, so this is a small square of bread, but only the white part of the bread. Ah, like the, the croutons, right? 
truth. If this is too negative, you, you, uh, you are, uh, you are a chef. <laughs> are you a chef? No. <laughs> you just uh, cook your, your, your crouton with a bit of shallots, fresh shallots. Uh, and garlic and a bit of uh, olive oil is in the oven for two minutes. Okay. Shallots. You take a bit of shallots. This is something I, I don't know what to do. I'm not as quick as him. That's why he's a chef in that room. So Pharaoh, there's a question. Um, yeah. <clears throat> by the participant about um, whether they can start Tasting? Yeah, if you want to start for, tasting, yeah, okay. for those I, I will explain the wine later. Okay. Yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, you can start with the Mondo 2014. Yeah, we start yeah. with the Mondo and we yeah. then go from the youngest to the oldest. Yeah. You can start tasting the wines first. I think we'll finish uh, in two minutes. Yeah, yeah. The cooking session. Shout out. The reserve. Onion. You have uh, pickles of onion. So vinegar and onion. You make your onion macerate in your vinegar and it makes kind of pickles. Same. You cut very in the very thin parts. Reserved. Yeah. Then you have the eel, but it is smoke eel. Back on the crouton. Can see the color of the crouton. Now, this is the, the dressing. Mm -hmm. First of all, the cream in the middle of the ring. Onion in the middle of the cream. Some shallots. Yes, the shallots. This is the Michelin star uh, dressing. Yeah? Okay. A bit of crouton for the crispiness. 
new texture compared to the meat and the, the cream. A cup of caviar, a spoon of caviar. You know, we produce a lot of good caviar in France. This is this one is coming from uh, Bordeaux region. A spoon of olive oil. now the veal makes it look so effortless but i'm sure if i do it i'm gonna be so clumsy <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, you have a nest of caviar in the middle i wish you can be all here to see that and smell how it's how good it smells I'm already very intrigued by how he's doing this <laughs> so meticulously with all the yeah, various the, ingredients. So this is the precision, precision yeah. of uh, yeah. the chef. It's all about the precision that makes fine dining so fine. True. Like just the, the right amount of pepper, just the right amount of crunch from the croutons, etc, etc. A lot of talent. Yeah. Like olive wine, oil. you know, it's like it's all about the balance. You see, Same you put thing. a bit of olive oil on the on the hill to make them uh, to make it uh, shine, yeah. and uh, even uh, more yummy. But yeah, it's, you're true. It's like the wine. You need to be very precise. And then, to make it perfect, few flowers. This is flowers we. Garlic. Uh, garlic flowers, yes. garlic flowers from uh, our garden because yes, we have a lot of flowers here, and uh, we use the flowers of our garden for the for the kitchen. Baby sorrel, baby sorrel, sorrel. This is baby sorrel. Okay. Yumi, yumi. Last spoon of olive oil to make it even more yumi and shiny. You see, perception is everything. Of course, it has to be good, but it has to be beautiful to make it even better. Impressive. I like the colors too. Perception is everything. And ta-da! Yep, just got myself Here a nice have, screenshot. You have a, a Trollo Mondo Michelin Star Chef Ville perfect match with the Trollo Mondo wines. And I will be the one who will eat it. I'm very Thank happy. You. <laughs> I don't want to make you too jealous. But one day, <laughs> if you can travel again, we will be very happy to have you there and make you taste uh, a true, good uh, Michelin Star Chef. So I want to thank you very much, David, for his time uh, and for the precision of his cook uh, and his end. And um, so we are the lucky one to, 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 to have a, a super chef with us every day. And I wish you can come one day to Trollo Mondo for, for, to taste our wines, of course, but to taste the food of the chef. Yes. Thank, thank you, you so much, chef. Very thank well you. done. <laughs> Celebrating already. <laughs>
<laughs> let's go for tasting now. Oh dear, that's all. For the, that's all. I can only see the food. Okay, let's go for our first um, tasting. One dot, okay. second wine. Up, back on the camera. Okay. Okay, here I am. <clears throat> we start with Mondo. 2014. Mondo uh, is a, a more approachable um, is a more approachable uh, uh, way to taste Trollo Mondo. Today Mondo is uh, and at that time as well 2014 is a definitely uh, uh, specific plot. We make Mondo on a very unique plot. So this is I will not say a second wine. It's a true different wine. Uh, it's the one you want to keep affordable in terms of taste and in terms of price. It's a true bistro, restaurant, wine shop wine. It's the one you can drink and have pleasure directly. Of course, keep it. It's a great wine anyway. Um, but it's a more approachable way to discover Trollo Mondo. It's made from limestone soil. Uh, today, it's 100% limestone soil. Uh, and the new, the new vintage after 2015 are 100% Merlot. At that time, we had a bit of Cabernet Franc, but um, this vintage is a, is a blend of few grapes, but mainly Merlot. Let's taste it. Cheers. Yes, cheers. So, 14 um, is a vintage with a cool, summer so it makes a very gentle and fresh grapes so you can see uh, the taste is very cool very juicy very fresh this is definitely the style we want to keep for mondo mondo has to remain this kind of wine full of freshness full of pleasure drinkable easy to digest this is something don't think too much just have pleasure wine is made for pleasure first of all it's not made to think and to, 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 to be too uh, concentrated. It just, it's, it's made for party, it's made for pleasure. Yeah. And this Mondo is the perfect reflect of what we want. We, want, we love good food, we love good wines. Very friendly wine. Light tannins, approachable. I spit my wine, I'm sorry. It's, it's a bit early for me to, to drink. So, and I have to work after. <laughs> so I have to spit the wine in the bucket. Very responsible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I have, to, I have to drive for four hours, so uh, I don't have to be, to be drunk before. <laughs> okay. So this wine, you see how precise, how fresh, how pure uh, is the wine. And this is all this is what we want for Mondo. Mondo has to remain this kind of wine. Pleasure. What do you think about it? Good. Yeah, it is drinkable now. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not really, you know, for aging too long. I think it's, it's no. perfect now. That for after six years. Yeah. Fine for drinking. But yeah. You can taste some 2011, you can drink some 2007. They are, this is great wine anyway. This is great wines, but um, it's an approachable way to, to, to drink Trollo Mondo. And um, of course, now after six years of bottle, uh, the wine is perfect to drink, but definitely our philosophy at Trollo Mondo uh, is, um, is to make wine uh, which are drinkable even young. Because good wines from top terroir has to be drinkable even young. It's a lot of pleasure when it's young, and then it's a lot of complexity when you age it. Okay, the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how about the second one? The second one would be uh, 215. Let's taste Two. the 215. For the Mondo, 2015. Now we go to another world. I mean, this is. Uh, top, this is our uh, top wine. This is the our top quality wine. Coming from the plot I show you, it's a blend of uh, our clay and flint lime, uh, soil and our limestone soil. 2015 was a kind of uh, hot vintage. 
And this old vintage make a very sexy wine. This wine is kind of sexy. And we like it because every vintage are different. And of course, we are not producing Coca-Cola. So every vintage are very different. And 15 for us is a sexy, very sexy wine, a sexy vintage. Do you see uh, the difference with Mondo? This Trollo Mondo got, it's deeper. It's another scale. It's another, um, another style. You have the strength, the power of the Cabernet Sauvignon and the, the freshness of the Cabernet France. And at the same time, you have the fruitiness of the Merlot. And in this wine, you can, you can find the limestone style with the, it's kind of juicy, it's mineral. And you have the clay style with the power, with the shoulders. There is, there is large shoulders in this wine. It's a young vintage, only five years old, but it's already a lot of pleasure. And this is what we want. Wine is made for pleasure again and again. It's made for that. It's not made for speculation. It's made for pleasure. You say 2015 is a hot vintage? Or it was, a warm, yeah. warm vintage? It was a warm vintage. It was a warm vintage, you see, you can feel. You will see then with the 2000, 2013, the next wine, you will see the difference. Uh, 15 is a hot, warm vintage. Uh, the Merlot was, quite, was very charming, was very uh, mature, very ripe. And uh, we can feel that the, the fruit is not green at all. It's perfectly uh, mature. And can be aged for very long, mm. 30 years. This is a, one of the top vintage of Bordeaux with 2016. Yes, 15 got time enough to, to be aged in a bottle for 20, 30 years, no problem. Trollo Mondo, we are known to make very old guard, very long guard wines. What do you think about it? Yeah, it's, um, I think uh, with some decanting, if it, to drink now, with some decanting, the tannins um, would soften uh, yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. But in terms of the flavor, the intensity is definitely there. Yeah. So the concentration, the quality is there. But I think, yeah, with a bit more decanting, maybe a couple of hours, I think. Yeah should be perfect, yeah, in terms this of texture. Is, this is what we do here. We open the wine. Um, for, for young vintage, we decant it for two hours. It's enough. Okay. And then when, after, when they are more than five years old, we open them, only open, to make them breathe slowly. Uh, and it's perfect after that. Okay. So let's try the 2013. Yeah. So we were going from, coming from a uh, hot vintage, we go now for a, a vintage which was uh, fresher. And this is to show you that, yes, we are not producing Coca-Cola here. We are producing wine. So every vintage are different. And uh, we want to keep the, the difference every vintage. Uh, this vintage, 2013, is a seven years old wine. It's full of freshness, full of uh, energy. And I like wines like this. I mean, those wines are, uh, let me see, vivid, very fresh, full of energy. You can drink a glass, uh, one more glass, uh, and you can finish the bottle quite easily. With some good dim sum, it will work very well. Mm. Mm. I like this purity. I don't know whether my mind is playing a fool on me, but is this more mineral or? But you feel I you feel the. I, the, I just the, feel, but I don't know for sure. Fifteen was very lush. Thirteen is much more mineral and um, uh, energy driven. You can see it's like a sh it's like kind of shulky. You can feel the shulk on the on the blackboard. Yeah, so this one definitely is uh, 
ele it's more elegant. Is that the right? Uh, yeah, it's older, so three years, three years, for two years more in the, of aging. So it's it started to be very drinkable, very easy to drink, and this vintage is much more approachable than 15. Uh, cheaper, of course, but m much more uh, approachable. Uh, and uh, it shows you how it can be uh, through le mondo when it's a, a cold and a rainy uh, season. Uh, and we know how to go to make mature uh, and, um, and uh, ripe uh, grapes, uh, even when the weather is a bit cold. It's an immediate pleasure, definitely. I'm curious about the 2007 now, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it definitely should have a lot more tertiary notes. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, bottle age notes. Even different label because at that time we used this label. This label, mm -hmm. we changed it in 2009 for the label you can see on the youngest vintage. Mm -hmm. Seven is a perfect vintage we use in the, in the restaurant in France today. We drink a lot of 2007 in the restaurants because they are at the moment perfect to be drunk. You have this kind of eucalyptus. Uh, you have this kind of um, smoky. Uh, uh, taste in the in the wine. Uh, it's it's funny to see how 2000, uh, 2007 can um, make me remember a bit of uh, uh, Scottish Scotch whiskey. You know the the Islay whiskey. You have this kind of smoky taste, uh, but it's made 100% with us at our uh, Trollomondo vineyard. But um, I love this wine because it's already very open. It's very easy to read. Yep. Okay, so you're saying Isla. Isla whiskey. Your pity notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like so, somewhat like seaweed, actually. Seaweed. See, yeah, yeah, That's seaweed. It. Yeah. But this is actually um, interesting for you to see how is the evolution of Trollomondo through the years. You have the pleasure, the sexiness of a young vintage, then it aged, you have more precision more complexity. And then you have the 07, which is already very open now. This is the magic mm. of Trollomondo wines. This is, of course, the aging. Young, it's a lot of pleasure. Older, it's a lot of complexity. Mm. Uh, if you drink a 1990 or a, uh, 1982, it's something very special again. Uh, it's another experience. Yeah, for those who like more bottle aging characters, I think the 2007, it's, it's really has more tertiary notes, more mellow. Is, yeah. Soft and uh, again, very easy to read this wine. You open the bottle and you can read the taste. Uh, you have this, comp this, this complexity is very approachable and yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, so some comments uh, from the floor. Dennis thinks that the 13 is juicier and lighter body and the 15 has more depth. Yeah. Which will show better with aging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have um, three kind of vintage. Uh, you, we make some vintage like 2013. They are perfect to drink now and uh, perfect to make uh, to give us more time to wait for the 2015 or 2016. Um, this is the magic of Bordeaux. Every vintage are different. And we want to keep them always different. Uh, for each moment you have your vintage. Today, if I want to make it very, something very easy and uh, uh, a good glass of wine with my friends, I will open a 2015 because it's full of pleasure. If I want to have a, to make a, a ville uh, tartare, I will open uh, 2007 to give to bring more complexity to my to my food uh, and uh, if I want to 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 eat uh, dim sum I will go more for uh, 2013 and then you have the Mondo Mondo which is the approachable way to drink to to, uh, to come at Trollo Mondo Mondo is the, the wine full of energy easy to drink to open with your friends and drink 
o night long and all day long. Yeah, don't need to think too much. Just pleasurable. Yeah, but don't, never forget that wine is only pleasure. We are there to make you happy. Uh, we don't we don't want to make you, you, you work every day, you are tired. Uh, don't go too deep into the wine, just keep pleasure. We are here to make you, to make the best wine possible for you. And then you just have to relax with your glass of wine. Yep, it's to have fun. Of course. And chill, of course. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've finished the tasting session. I think, uh, yeah, we have got some really um, good reviews um, in the group yeah. chat. Yeah. Every, everybody other, is happy? Yeah. I'm happy. Cool. At, at you like the wine? My happy hour has started. <laughs> hey, <laughs> this is Friday. Think, yeah, yeah. yeah. TGIF. TGIF, what, oh, yeah, what, what the perfect timing. Yeah. I think there's a question about um, how much is a night stay at the Chateau? Is there a price for the tasting? Uh, for crystal wine client, we can make something very special. But if you go on the website, you see the regular price. It's between 250 euro to uh, uh, 400 euro per night. For uh, crystal wine clients, we can do something very special to have you there. Okay, and uh, another question, how has the style changed since, I hope I pronounce this correctly, Emeric took over in 2017? Uh, since Emeric de Gironde arrived, we decided because of the climate change to go to something very, uh, very pure. We decided to decrease the power. We have a lot of power into our wines, into our soil. So we decided to be more gentle in terms of power. This is the, 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 the future of Trollomondo. Since vintage 2017, uh, Mondo and Trollomondo are much more now fruit driven, mineral tea driven, juiciness. Uh, this is the new style. Okay, yeah, I look forward to the new style. But this is uh, a yeah. natural progression, right? Because I'm, I believe what you've gone through with us You've also mentioned about the philosophy being about the fruit, the purity. Yeah, no more makeup into the wine, less oak barrel, less toasty taste, less, uh, less wood. Um, pumping over. Yeah, no more yeah. extraction, only extraction. infusion, like your tea, like your tea bag into your hot water, no more extraction. Okay. I think there's no more questions from the floor. Okay. Yeah. So I want to thank you very much, Crystal Wine. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, people, to, to your guests and you people to, to, to listen to me. I'm a bit boring, sorry. I hope it was very uh, interesting for you. And I wish to see you in Singapore or in, uh, in saint Emilion. I really want to say thank you to, to Crystal for this beautiful uh, tasting. Thank you so much, Pharaoh. Thank you for especially um, arranging that cooking session. I, to yeah. me, it's really eye-opening. I can really see the chef doing his thing. I think, yeah, like you mentioned precision and everything. Okay, so hopefully I can try the, yeah, you owe me one, you Tata. <laughs> I owe you one. <laughs> Next <I will>. year. <laughs> <laughs> or chef, bring chef along, and to all our participants, thank you. I know some of, some of you are very yeah very loyal with us. Yeah, so continue to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Telegram to receive all the news um, uh, on our, our offers and our upcoming virtual masterclasses. We received already a few um, orders for Troplan Mondo, mm. which we sent out uh, this morning. So if you like the wines, visit our website www.crystalwines.com for these offers we will be putting it up for two weeks and um and if you have any feedback at all about our virtual classes how we run them uh anything at all that you want to share with us yeah send it to marketing and thank you again Beryl. It has thank been you very much pleasure bye thank bye. you thank everyone you. bye yes bye. we all leave the session